Hello and welcome to another episode of the Master Mind, Body, and Spirit Show. I am your host, Matt Belair, and I am so excited to introduce to you today's guest. He was 41 years old, just sold his latest company for $94 million. He had six houses, two airplanes, 27 oh, and everything else a human could possibly imagine. That was 10 years ago, and yet he couldn't figure out why he was so unhappy. He could manifest anything, and yet every new thing that he manifested ultimately made him feel worse about himself. He was using alcohol, drugs, sex, and anything else imaginable to mask the pain. He was a miserable human being. After moving to California for a fresh start, he failed again. Next, he was introduced to Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith and started going to Agape for the first time in his life. He began to have hope. On a vacation to the Philippines, he visited with a friends with friends who, and one of them was a shaman. He had a colleague with similar problems to him and found a solution. She told him about plant medicine that was being served in Costa Rica and how it cured her friend. He was honestly near to the end of his rope again, so he figured what the heck he would give it a shot. He went down to Costa Rica, tried plant medicine. It was that night it changed his life. He spent the evening with God who reaffirmed the metaphysical lessons he learned. He got first. He saw firsthand that love was holding the universe together, that we were all connected and witness other universal truths directly from source. The next morning, he was a different man. A miracle occurred in his life. He swore that that day he would do the right thing with his wealth and share the secret with as many people as he could. He then purchased a gorgeous luxury resort in beautiful Costa Rica and designed programs that produce miracles in people's lives. Complete life transformations happen every day. It is their goal to provide all of the things that were used to evoke his awakening all in one inclusive experience, meaning you check in and have all the things that took him years to find available in one week in an all-inclusive experience, spa visits, plant medicine, doctor consultations, counseling, metaphysical classes, farm-to-table, organic food, colonics, and more. Now miracles are happening every single day, and 92% of the people who check out of the resort cry because they've had a miracle in their lives. Welcome to the show, Gerard Powell. What's up, brother? Thanks, Matt. That was awfully long, and I don't know who wrote <laughs> that, but it's wild. <laughs> I know. I told you. I told you it was a bit long, and I I started to shorten it, but I was like, dude, I, just I, reading I the story. <laughs> yeah, but but reading the story though, man, it's 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 amazing. It's a good. It's a no. It's a fantastic story, and I think that it really sets up a very beautiful scope for a, an in-depth conversation we can have because it's very unique, uh, very powerful, very inspirational. And uh, I came at work because of the truth. Um, so you've kind of had one interesting go of things, my friend. Um, and you're, you're in Costa Rica now. And you're you're doing amazing work. I've had friends down there. I currently have a friend, uh, Jennifer Sardini, there again, and I've heard amazing things. So, do you want to give the audience a little bit of background, um, you know, a little bit more detail of whatever you want to go into, so they can kind of understand who you are, and then we'll get into, you know, some things about the plant medicine and all the amazing work that you're doing down there. Because I myself, uh, as we was we discussed, have experienced plant medicine eight times. Um, and some other kinds as well. And it, and it is a game changer when done correctly. Um, it can be very, very powerful. So, yeah. I believe. Yeah, well, listen, thank you so much, Matt, for having us on. And uh, it means a lot to me, the work that everybody's doing, and just to participate in this shift and, and be a part of something. I want to be real clear that I'm, I don't consider myself like special, picked or chosen. I'm not a thought leader. I'm just a, a guy that had some extreme shit happen to him and uh, and I had a, a pretty strange life. And uh, you know, like like the the thing that was written said is that I, I really was uh, I was born into a pretty violent household and we I was in a household where women were beaten and children were beaten 
and uh, and I got out of I got kicked out of schools and then I I went to jail and uh, and I was still a kid I was only out of like 11th grade a year or two when I went to jail and uh, I got acquitted of everything that I did and I actually did it I was a I was a criminal and and I decided I was going to do something with my life so I I set my sights on making money because I had no frame of reference for anything else. And I was really good at making money. I, I became a real millionaire in my 20s and took a company public in my 30s and had like $140 million net worth. I went bankrupt uh, uh, in my late 30s in the dot-com crash. I lost everything and, and I actually had a negative net worth. I owed six million bucks and I had no assets at the time. And uh, Started another company when I was 38, but I sold at 41 for about 94 million bucks in cash, and I quit working. Uh, and that's the pretty side of the story. The, the bad side of that is in those years, I got married, I had two children, I became a, a world-class asshole, like a, a bigger asshole than, than, than I think I've ever met. I was right up there in the top 10 assholes ever, like I was a real fucking bad guy. And I was a, I was a drug addict. I was a fighter. I was always in fights. I was condescending. I was a sex addict. I was a full-blown alcoholic, uh, drug addict, like womanizer, wife beater, the the worst combination of things that you can imagine. And uh, during this during this time, I uh, I tried to commit suicide two times unsuccessfully. And, you know, I just, my life was, was terrible. And I wound up in a rehab center in California and uh, I stayed there for a couple of months. And I was, at the time I was addicted to injectable Benmol. I was injecting five sticks a day of Benmol. And, uh, and, you know, I came out of passages and then I went into counseling and I, I hired a guy that was running passages and I hired him full time. And, uh, I had him for six years, so I was I was a five days a week, eight hours a day in therapy for six years, and I still wanted to kill myself. I was still a fuck up, and I I couldn't understand why I was such a uh, what the, what was wrong with me. I couldn't understand what was wrong with me, and so I went to I went to uh, on a trip to the Philippines, and and this woman stopped in at me who was a shaman who I knew from passages. And she told me about a place in in Costa Rica where a friend of hers went, and the friend actually went down and did plant medicine, and became a different guy like in a week. And I didn't believe it, but I was fucking out of things to try. So I went down and I I did it, and I did this plant medicine, and and <clears throat> it was the the most amazing night of my life. I actually. Uh, the way this particular medicine works is that uh, you take the medicine and then you have a blindfold on and the shaman keeps tapping your head until you see his fingers through the blindfold. And I saw the dude's fingers and that's the first supernatural experience I've ever had in my whole life. And I saw this guy's fingers and then he held his fingers up and he said, how many fingers do I have up? And he had three up and I said, you have three up. And he goes, okay, now look at the ceiling. And I looked at the ceiling and he said, now make, make the ceiling disappear. And I did. And then he, there were all these stars. And he said, jump to a star. And I jumped to a star. And then he said, fly faster, fly faster. And I was flying through the sky. And I looked back and I saw him and my body in the bed down below. And, and he said, go to the moon. And I went to the moon. And this is what's crazy is that the, I crashed into the moon. And then I got a TV screen, just like I'm looking at right now, like a screen with a cursor on it, and then a picture of the moon with my feet sticking out of the moon. And and this is the truth of truth. And he said, uh, now ask it your first question. And I said, so my first question was, why am I such an asshole? So I said, I said, why am I such an asshole? And the moon started typing on the screen answers. And it made me go get my soul. And I went and I negotiated with my soul, like just like I'm talking to you. And I got my soul to help me. And, and then we flew to uh, my grandfather's house. I hadn't seen him in 40 some years. We went inside and uh, everybody in the house was dead, like dead, but they're alive, like, you know, and he opened the closet door and I was getting molested as a child. 
and it explained everything to me in this one moment that explained why my relationship was, with women was the way it was, why I didn't trust men, why all, the, all these things. And uh, one thing led to another, and I got all my questions answered, and the moon actually gave me a brand new heart. So the moon did three things with me. It made me see who I'd become, and then it merged me back with my soul, and then it healed my heart. And then the next day, I was a different guy. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't want to do any of the shit that I normally do. Uh, I, I, I was just a different human. And there's no other way to say this than was a different human. And then a couple of journeys later, it told me that I have to do this for other people. And I have to buy a place and all this stuff. And I didn't want to do this shit. I didn't want to come down here and spend $10 million on a fucking place and be in a business I know nothing about. I know nothing about this business. I know nothing about it. And, and uh, you know, and this, you know, dealing with people, and I've tried my whole life to stay away from people, and I'm, I'm in this thing where I'm immersed in, 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 in dealing with people, and, and I end up falling in love with it, and, and it's the greatest thing. I sold, I had a big house in Malibu, I sold my house in Malibu, I'm living in a hotel room here, this is what I'm living in, and, uh, and I'm happier than I've ever been in my life, and really happy, that's from my heart, like, and, I'm fucking happy, and uh, and I never had happiness, and I'm I'm happy, and and we're we see about a hundred people a week, and they come in here and they leave, and they're they're different people, they're different people. I know that was a long-winded answer, and I'm sorry for optimizing that part of it, but I wanted to tell you the truth. Of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's what I want, man. As long as you want to go and in as much detail, brother, it's it's a really fascinating story, uh, and and powerful man like holy crap okay so just for clarity though the plant medicine that did this this was ayahuasca because it sounds a little bit like uh, iboga first, to uh, me first, my first 45 journeys were on iboga well i hope you didn't uh, what uh, the internet was a little bit slow so 45 the, the first, first 45, 45 you said were iboga we're on a boga, and then my last 160 were on ayahuasca. Yeah, interesting. Because, um, you know, I was uh, – ayahuasca is very interesting. Um, the way that I kind of relate it to people uh, is consciousness medicine. It's Buckley's for your consciousness. Um, and, and so, you know, it's going to make you look at yourself for sure. So some people, you know, a lot of people are intuitively afraid of it because they know in their guts something's going to change. You're going to have to look at yourself raw. And if there's something that you're hiding, you bet your butt that it's going to show you that, um, you know, so very interesting. You should, and you know, just for the people out there, cause I've had a few people on that have done ayahuasca. We've talked about it a lot. Um, you know, do it with a reputable shaman. Don't do it by yourself. Do it with somebody oh that you God. trust that you resonate. It's very, very important stuff. So, you know, I could imagine, uh, coming there and doing it would be a really, uh, beneficial spot and also you're going to be helping with the integration um so I, yeah. i'm kind of going off a tangent because i will talk about integration too because that's super important um but the way that i describe it it's kind of like a shift in consciousness that's so big it's the difference between like a duck takes ayahuasca and then he's fully human conscious or even you know so wherever <laughs> we go in that realm um there's no words for it you you're just in this experience that you can't through words fathom but you want other people to have it because you're like, how was that experience for you? Um, you know, what did you bring back? And what I really love about it is when I would do ceremony in um, Canada, you know, we would talk after and we'd have potlucks and we would discuss just, you know, how, our experience and how it was. And the root of what would happen, of what people would say, they would want to be more loving and kind to themselves. They would want to be more loving and kind to others and they would want to be of service. And that's what the plant medicine has the power to do, but it has to start with your own healing because, you know, if someone's drowning and you can't swim, you're of no use, you know? So you have to learn how to save yourself first from your own demons, your own healing. And, and that's really what it does. So, um, so that's kind of like my take on it. I, 160 ceremonies yeah, right. is, is a lot. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about um, what you have set up on the resort. Like I love the initiate uh, the um, 
the mission behind it, putting it all in one spot, you know, you're going to get the plant medicine, then you're going to get instant integration. So with ayahuasca, you get the message and it shows you, but not everybody then actually takes it and integrates the information. It's kind of like, if you're really out of shape, ayahuasca would show you like, yo, you just need to eat fruits and vegetables and clean up your diet, start working out and some form of exercise and you're going to, you're, you're going to lose all these diseases that you currently have and you're going to be healthy. Now, whether you start doing that is a whole other story, but it shows you in some sort of crazy fifth dimensional, you know, thing. It showed me food in a way that I can't even ever describe. And it changed the way I eat instantly That's like amazing. that. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Amazing, right. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. It's magic. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about, um, um, like the setup that you have going on there, the intention and some so, of the things. So what we what we sort of did is that, uh, well, the, the crazy thing is on that journey, on that first journey, uh, you know, the moon explained to me that that like it drew this thing, and it and it it showed me. I'm gonna draw it for you a second. I just want to show you. And this is what we built the resort on. It showed me that between when someone's conceived and five years old. They leave their soul to become something else uh, out of safety, out of the, the quest for safety. And that and that all the plant medicine does is reunite someone with their soul. So so we set this whole place up uh, to so we have metaphysical classes in the day that are based on this. Um, my friend is uh, Michael Beckwith, his church is called Agape. I, I don't even use the word church. His center is called Agape, and he's one of the authors of the book The Secret and stuff. And he, he understands this thing uh, that the medicine showed us. And so we have the, the class, The Answer is You, that's every day. Then we have our programming that's that teaches you how to use the medicine because so many people just pop into the medicine and they have no idea uh, of how to how to 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 navigate the medicine. And the medicine can be scary if 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 you don't understand what's loaded in it, if you don't understand and and how to get around. So we have classes on that. We have uh, the Dead Sea Cleanse, which is a uh, open water hydroponic cleanse that, that we have. We have ten of them here, and you go through the cleanse. And then all of our all of our food is farm to table organic, and the farms are uh, contiguous to this property. Uh, and it's all super fresh. And then, then we have massage, like normal things like massage and yoga every day and meditation and, and uh, a bunch of uh, programming like uh, transformational breathwork classes, all kinds of stuff that's loaded in. So you end up coming in and doing four ayahuasca ceremonies. You have uh, two transformational breath uh, ceremonies. We have... Uh, a total of 16 classes during that week, including integration before and after every uh, journey, every ceremony. And, and it's the combination of these things that produces a result that's really, I mean, it's truly remarkable. And, and, and because these things involve the soul, the way it's designed that we put people back with their soul, uh, the change that happens is a permanent change. And we stay in touch with these people and, and, and and it's really, really, really permanent. And I'm a data junkie. I came, I came out of the business world. So like, we we track every single thing. And and uh, and right now, as it takes like 92.86 percent of the people who walk through the door report that they have the life changing, soul merging experience while they're here. And then 86 uh, percent of them, eight months later, are still carrying that 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 thing because you know it changes the way you think the medicine does the medicine gets in there and it refires the way your brain fires it reworks it so you know it's really real and and people some people say oh god this guy must be doing this for the money the last thing in the world i'm doing this thing for is the money this is this is like an automatic loser this thing is a a, a money <laughs> pick but but it's the best thing i've ever done i'm like I'm, I get up every day and I'm I'm on fire for for you know dealing with this and and I'm not kidding you Matt I used to dislike people I would look at everybody as either can I have sex with them or can I get something from them you know are they going to help me da, 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 da. and and even then I didn't want to talk to them 
So, so I went from like being this, what appeared to be a diabolical kind of shy guy that I was working to, I'm talking to him. I can't stop talking. I love, and it's only, this is only like two and a half years ago. This happened, or three and a half years ago. This happened to me. My first hearing was on July 4th of 2014. And within a couple of months, I already owned this place. I already like everything. And it took me a year and a half to get a license. But, and you know, because we have a medical license. So the difference here is that we have doctors, nurses, technicians on staff 24 hours a day. Uh, so like, you know, we check your blood pressure before you go into a journey. After you come out of a journey, we, we, there's, there's, you know, Western medical licensed people here. Uh, and, Kate, and nothing has ever happened, but but for some reason, like Westerners, people from especially Canadians and Americans, we love to know that there's somebody on standby just in case, you know. And uh, <laughs> you know, it's good, you know. And that's our that's basically our the, the whole program that we have. Man, that's 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 powerful, dude. That's really amazing. If you have it's so important like i was talking about the integration once you have it and i just want to commend you on integrating your messages because you get them right and you see it and you know man you know another way that i like to say what ayahuasca is it's like talking to mother earth it's like earth intelligence it's like the planet's communicating with you and it's different like when you're when your dad is mad at you you know like you're like oh yeah you know that's that's fine but when your mom is mad at you um you feel like an a-hole because you disappointed them you know what i mean it's like worse you know you're like oh man so it's just like you know you're in this realm and she's just like look at what you've been doing and you're like oh no and you can't hide and you're in like the 5d thing and you go through your healing and process and just pulls away your layers um and then you know sometimes many times it might show you hey like this is something that you could connect to um that uh that will improve your life that will make you a better person and that will serve humanity you know one of the constant ones i was on a podcast earlier today and um you know i say for me something for for ayahuasca and enlightenment uh two common fundamentals one is that you ex you accept Every single thing that has happened to you, uh, you take full responsibility for. You have to, or you're a victim, right? With it, in a victim mentality, you cannot be a creator. Creator or victim are very, very different. So you accept 100% of everything that has ever happened or will happen as your responsibility. And the second trait is you go from selfish to selfless. You know, how yeah. can I serve? How can I help? How can I support? And it's so. It just makes sense, man. Like if we're just a bunch of monkeys going around, just help each other, right? But you, I would have been like, you know, I'm getting there now, bouncing up. But like before, I'd be like, you son of a bitch, you know, what I mean? stop trying to like take people's shit, man. And, and so, you know, you can just switch, but you feel better, you know? And if we start to think about how we can serve, we're going to want to serve in a way that we're excited about, you know, and one of the ways that I put it, it's like if we're in the forest, you know, and, the, and you're looking down at the forest, you've got beavers and ducks and birds. And what's happening is people that are birds are trying to be, you know, beavers and nobody's happy. But when you connect with who and what you are and you realize you're a beaver, you start doing your things and you're going to love it. And everyone in the forest is going to be happy. Everybody, you know, who needs you to do what you do. And you have now your unique signature that fits in with the whole. Um, so that was that was a little bit of a rant. Um, but what I, I wanted it. to go back to, um, if you can add on that, but the question I had is you've done a lot of ceremony. If you could maybe have um, some perspective or principles that you would offer somebody um, that hasn't done ceremony, but some of the things that you've learned and integrated maybe around self-acceptance or your own path or whatever, just a message that you could you could even give to yourself before if you would listen if you you know like talking to your Absolutely. former self so one of the one of the most interesting things that they just said too is that there's this you know super strong movement in the world and especially young amongst younger people uh to be like spiritual and it's almost taken on a trend like uh, uh phenomenon where it's where it's like if you walk around venice you know, you're like, holy God, this is now a scene. It's a scene. And and the thing that I always caution people, I say, like, you know, if you're going to use your spirituality, 
as like a fancier dress for your ego, ayahuasca is not your thing. Cause, cause ayahuasca will rip your shit out of you so quick that, that it's not your thing. So like the, the people who are coming to ayahuasca, because your soul knows, you know, that you're coming to do this journey. Those people are serious about what they're doing. They're serious about what they're doing uh, because you know that your ego is going to be coming right up against your soul. This is like, boom, boom, boom. It's, it's on, it's on when you do it. Right. So, so, so that's the first thing I, I'd say, look at like, uh, you know, this is the real thing and it's divine and sacred and all these things. And if you come to it, the way that I would say is the, just like in the Bible, uh, in the Bible, I wonder if you can hear me. Can you hear, Matthew, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 sorry. Um, it, it cut out for a little bit. Do you want to, I heard, it was interesting because I wanted to know what you said. It was like divine and something else. And then it kind of went to me, a little it's Costa like Rican. divine and sacred, you know? And, oh, okay, yeah. And, you know, there were some, you know, I was brought up Catholic and there were some really great pearls in the Bible. And the medicine is asking you to come to it as a child, just like, just like Christ asked in Christ consciousness that, that you have to come as a child. And that means without story. That's without your coolness. That's without your bullshit. That's without your degree or your wallet or your wife or your deal. That's just you coming as naked as you. And when you come to the medicine in that way, uh, the medicine will operate in phases. And the first thing it'll do, it'll clear you of anything that's, that's between you and your true self. So so, you know, people get scared shit because they're shitting or puking hot or whatever they're doing. And the medicine is going through you and collecting those things that are between you and you and getting rid of them. And then it starts showing you some scary, can show you some scary stuff about yourself. Uh, and the, the thing to keep in mind where most people tend to get a little squirrely is they have to understand that anything the medicine is showing them is being healed. So it makes you welcome the shadow aspects of what's going on with you uh, to be seen because they're being healed. And then, and then, then after that, the medicine, because once the medicine puts you back in your, in your soul, then it can heal your heart. Then it can do sacred surgery. It can, it can come in and like, uh, you know, we're, you know this more than anybody, but we are perfectly de designed to heal ourselves. There's, there's no drug, no extract, no, no concoction that has ever been made that's, that can rival how we can heal ourselves when we're on plants. Like if we're, if we're healing ourselves properly, we're a healing machine. Uh, you know, I, I'm of the opinion people can grow limbs. I mean, this, we're a healing unit. And, and, and when you, when you, you know, get out of the way, when you put yourself back in your soul, you have the ability to heal yourself and the medicine can actually come in and assist with, uh, something called sacred surgery, where it comes in and fixes some, you know, you're a skateboarder and sure you have a, all kinds of broken shit in you from, from when you were a kid, right? <laughs> so I did. Okay. In, I, I broke a few bones. <laughs> I would think, right. And uh, you'd be surprised. It comes in and it heals. And 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 the thing that people are afraid of the the spiders and snakes. Well, snakes are often in there. But the things that that most people are afraid of, the monsters, uh, are just you. Like the 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 monster you're really afraid to see is the one that is you. You know, that's it. You know. Yeah, man. You touched on a lot of uh, really important points there. Um, you know, I often said after the first few times I did money and I was like, if I could push a button and, you know, make everybody in the world have to do ayahuasca, I would instantly, um, because, you know, it, you have to face yourself, you know, and a lot of us are living in the ego, which is just, you know, like our personality it doesn't have to be so bad personality and, and culturally it's related to survival. 
and competition. And that's just like what's going on. And so we're, you're, we're getting money, we're doing these things, but we're not conscious of what we're doing, who we're impacting, how we're impacting things. So when you have an ayahuasca experience, it shows you all of that. It shows you your footprint, you know, don't think about carbon footprint. That's nonsense. It'll show you like your life existence footprint and everything and how you're thinking and how you're going to your people, how your energy, you know, it's just, it's like 5d. It's a whole nother thing. Um, and then for me, when I come back, you know, it's like, I know that this is some sort of illusion or game. And when we talk about like Christ consciousness, um, or whatever the case is, it's love consciousness, you know? And, and one of the, Examples I share is um, at Burning Man. It's kind of an ayahuasca thing. And uh, at Burning Man, you know, thing, uh, people are offering you party and booze and trampoline and fun and incredible art. And it's just uh, ridiculous. But what you can't get a lot of times is friggin' water. And you're in the middle of the desert and you're dancing and it's hot and you're like, oh my God, like I'm out of water. And so if you come up to someone and they say, hey man, like, like water. And if, if the person doesn't have any, it's like, sorry, brother, I don't have any water. I wish I did. I'd love to help you out because it looks like you're dancing all night and you really need it. Um, I use that kind of as an expression for self-love. If you don't have any love for yourself and heal for yourself, when somebody comes to you and they need healing or help or support on just a basic human level or what your energy is that you carry on, if you're full with love, if you're full with water, you can share that with other people. And that's the most powerful thing to do these gnarly things and start huge change the world we just really got to start with changing ourselves and then yeah. actually caring about other people super simple it is super super simple and the thing that you just said that that's the source of all things like when people are done uh we put them through these things where they have they're they're called uh laddered intentions right and they they these intentions bleed into each other and then when they're done with that, like usually by Wednesday or Wednesday night journey, they're asking the medicine, uh, what do you need me to be or what do you need me to become? And the medicine consistently, consistently, consistently answers, we need you to be you. And this is, this is all you fucking need to do is to be you. And that's where the medicine just comes constantly, comes back to that. And then one interesting thing, it says, well, what is me? And how do I be more me? And then the medicine said the craziest thing. It, it typed, it said, <laughs> stop shining a light on the things that you're not. And I thought about that and I thought, holy fuck, how simple is that? To just stop shining a light on the things that I'm not, you know? <laughs> like a baby shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, man, that's amazing. It's so true. And that's another thing we're, we're conditioned to do in to just focus on all the things that we don't want. So in law of attractions, it's super simple. You know, you attract your life, never give you your attention, energy, and focus to. And culturally, it's designed to give your attention to all these stupid things that don't serve you, you know, or anyone else for that matter. It's just nonsense distraction. And so if we can start to be creators with ourselves, uh, begin to know ourselves and just express, like express our own joy and bliss. What is, what is our unique signature? Or what do we want to be? Um, and so I'm, I'm curious your thoughts. Uh, I'll just go and kind of go with the bigger question here. Um, humanity as a whole, like we're, we're at this point where, you know, people have an opportunity now to find education, to find plant, me plant medicine. This is plants, man. This is plant medicine. This is, this is coming out. This is mother earth being like, yo, stupid species. You got to stop blowing me up. Dum dums. You know what I mean? Here you go. Take this Buckley's wake up and then start being nice to each other. That just makes sense. Start cooperating, start, start doing sustainable. None of this is geez, it's ridiculous. So in your experience, seeing people heal, um, one of the people that come to mind is my friend, Jeffrey Slater. He's a big time business guy. I don't know if you know who he is, but he created yeah. businesses, very, very successful guy. And he was miserable too. And he wanted to commit suicide also. Um, <laughs> found ayahuasca, healed himself, and now he finds CEOs, big business people, things like that. Because if you heal from the top down, now we're having a real impact. So the question goes from, from your experience, maybe in the business world and what you see as humanity as a whole, do you see this like introducing consciousness and cooperation and collaboration on the planet? Like are you 
hopeful in in that kind of manner because that is, is pretty much a, a technology it's, it's for years or do one day of ayahuasca i i uh, you know, i cut out a little bit there but i but i believe what you were saying was that do i see is ayahuasca being the thing or do i see something else being the thing that leaves us out is that yeah do you see do you do you see like are you optimistic of these connections of building you know a new more sustainable planet because i see it kind of like fractaling you've got the old system trying hard to perpetuate the nonsense but you really have a strong ethical collective that are saying hey this is not sustainable let's start working together let's start grounding this is that um some of the conversations that you're having there and i have i have such faith in you guys in like the younger the young i'm, I'm an older guy right now and I, I just see these kids and, and honestly, and they're so much more connected. And I tell you so much more connected. It's night and day between just 20 years ago and what's happening right now. And the, and the thing is, you know, I think that the pendulum has swung so far to fucking crazy, to real crazy, uh, that, that it has to, it, it, it has to come back, and I have such faith in humanity, and I have such faith in the plants. I have such faith uh, in the intelligence of, of of people and of plants. Like we're so highly intelligent, we don't know it, but we're we're super super intelligent. The, the it's terrible that the part that beats your heart is smarter than the one that runs your mouth. It's it's crazy that that's true, but it's true. There's such intelligence and survival and survival is based in love and, and the thing is that when it comes right down to it when it pushes right the button before that that button is love right that that's what makes things survive uh, so I, I have such confidence and I, I have such confidence in in the plants uh, assisting in this because uh, and and for, for whatever reason kids and I don't mean kids I mean like from you know, zero to thirty. The kids, the zero to thirty-five. The 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 the, the, the that generation of, of of people. You know, they they automatically already question paper money and question lots of the shit that's like that we took for granted. I was like, you know, I didn't dare question whether this shit that I'm putting in my body would be good for me. Of course, it's good. It's on TV. I think. I think it was like. You know, but these kids doubt everything, and that doubt is next to love. So I know that this is going to happen, and I know the Donald Trumps and the 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 Kim Youngs and all these. I know that this is this is the end. It's not the end of civilization. It's it's the final. Hey, take a look at this. It's the final. Here it is. You now you're forced to look at it. Like I I I am I'm I'm so optimistic. It's crazy. Even with this. North Korea shit going on, all the bullshit around it. I'm, I, I never doubt. I'm not, I'm not doubting because, because that survival is in them, and that survival is love. It's, it's underneath a lot of shit, but it's there, and it's, I think it's coming. <laughs> uh, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> I like the way you put it. It's underneath a lot of shit, but it's there. It's love. It's, there. It, it's true, man. That, that's, that's how I see it, man. And, and if you, um, actually, on the podcast, as being interviewed earlier we were talking about play a lot um you know i watched a video of these two you know when they put like a baby tiger with a dog or whatever and then they play all these i found it interesting that animals play also like these big grizzly bears and lions when you when they're little tiny guys they play and when we're thinking about life who said it needed to be this freaking serious Oh who God. who made it this serious? You know what I mean? Like you can choose a reality that is based in play. That's based, you know, for me, it was snowboarding and with surprise. I wanted to go snowboarding. I just went snowboarding and I built a life around it. And it was epic. It was a lot of fun. And so that to me is life. Life is whatever you choose to make it. You can choose to go to war. You can choose to sign up. And then all of a sudden people are shooting at you. That's a crazy reality that you can choose, that is. you know? So if we can start to create love-based realities, if we can start to make decisions, you know, like for you, um, having 
you know, the past, like alcohol or things like that. Those weren't decisions based on love. It's masking these things. And so first you make decisions that love yourself, honor yourself, and then you can express. And if we can start to collaborate and team up with one another, um, you know, we're really going to change things fast. And I agree with you. I, I, I'm so like tuned in. And, and if you see these things, if you see the things that, that permeate our society that are like, uh, what we consider to be not good, the, the stepping stones, they're all, all this power, greed, money, alcoholism, all the shit that, that, that is out of sync, uh, comes from just somebody not being in touch with themselves. And as soon as they are in touch with themselves, Somebody coming in? Can you hear me? No, that's I. I don't know if you heard me because my screen went went blank. But as soon as they are in touch, with, as soon as they're in touch with themselves, these things dissipate. All of this stuff. So, like you know, I I had this dream about like kidnapping Donald Trump and and forcing him <laughs> to drink the ayahuasca. Like it sounds crazy, right? But, but it wouldn't be fun to do. You know, like you know, you know, like and just. One night on the medicine, just one night on the medicine, and and half of these problems would go away. I could go to the United Nations with with like a fifty gallon drum of the shit, and we fix all this shit. We would fix all this shit, you know. <laughs> It's true, man. It's it's a hundred percent true. And more and more influential people are doing it. And I actually had a comment. Uh, somebody, uh, it was an influencer, and they go, "I I really admire how open and upfront you are about ayahuasca experiences. It was really uh, transformational for me." I was like, "Why are you not? Why would you not hide this?" Like, I think I don't know if I think someone told me that Tony Robbins has done it. Like, I don't know. Maybe he has. He hasn't. I don't know. But a guy like that, you know. Like, Share that. You're super influential. This is powerful, powerful, powerful. We need it to be done right in the right circumstances with the right shamans, with the right people. Um, done in that way, it can transform lives in within a week. Nothing else that I know of um, doing personal development, anything like that has that kind of impact. You could go to a Tony. Well, I love Tony. He's awesome. You go to a week, me, and I, I'll, you know what I mean? I'll get you into uh Tons of stuff, breathing, meditation. You know, I'll do lots of awesome stuff. But if you have an opportunity to drink the medicine and you're ready, I'd be like, yeah, do that and then talk to you because that is plant intelligence. This is a whole nother way. This is you communicating with yourself in a realm through a direct experience that you can. So I, I fully on, fully on the same thought of the power of it. Um, and and what you've created over at Rhythmia is truly outstanding. Um, having that integration, like-minded people, uh, you're you're having safe for I, you know I get so many questions about like you know are you afraid or you could die or walking down the street man like you know it's not it's fine you know it's like you're fine <laughs> because you're gonna face your your face your so really spectacular. Um, space that you have there really really powerful um i know that you you're limited in time today but what i wanted to ask uh before i let you go is um just anything that you wanted to touch on anything that you wish that i had asked and you know we can go as long as yeah. you have time thing, now that i got to know you uh, you got to get your ass down here and, and sit with us we gotta we gotta drink some together yeah that's like, how you that's that's how you know somebody <laughs> I want to give you an open invitation anytime you want. I'd love you to be our guest. I'd love you to come down. You're you're, you're doing amazing stuff. And like, uh, you know, if you if some of your listeners want to come down to 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 experience it, they go to thisrhythmia.com. It's r y t h m i a dot com, and um, and they can check it out, check the place out. But but you know, I think that there's so much that that people can do, and I. I always look at it like, well, what what has to happen in order for the world to change? And all that has to happen is one at a time, people have to become aware of who they are. That's it. We don't need a, we don't need a, to join a group or have a team or do any of this shit. All we got to do is just is just realize who we are. And it's that easy. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Man, I 100% agree. You know, it's interesting.
interesting people are waking up you know and like what does awake mean it just means you just start to question the nonsense you take a look at yourself and who you actually are what you want to contribute and then say like spirituality is not being a piece of shit you know, an asshole <laughs> you know, it's like that's how you know like if somebody needs some help and you're there you know don't tell them to you know, go f them out maybe give me for a second and move on to the best you can and like that's it and that truly is how simple it is and ayahuasca is one of those things wake up it's 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 you wait you're it's it's so profound now you know i'll say this also there's the holotropic breathing and things like that you have there um yeah so you know that's an experience people can have holotropic breathing and also there's a ananda jiri if you if you uh google that you go through these breathing and once i get it's hard to do but once i get up to the uh third eye my i start to buzz out and have a mini because the methyltryptamine which comes from our pineal gland which is in all plants all animals all things so it's connected to everything so it just makes sense um and so yeah so you can start to have the experiences if you don't want to go fully on board but you know wherever you are start to just you know you can just tune in with yourself you don't need to go ham but you can if you really want to explore yourself, you have that option. But the idea is just to start looking at who you are and what your imprint is and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and that thing, too, that, that like, I'm going to tell you the craziest thing is that, you know, when, when I was a kid, uh, everybody was like, oh, you know, go make money. And, and, like, the greatest fucking gift I've ever been given is money because it made me realize what bullshit that was. It was a complete crock of shit. To you want to control people? Here's how to do it. Tell them to go chase something that 99.99% of them aren't going to get. They're not going to get. And just go ahead and make this your world, the aim of your life, to go chase this thing. And then and then just watch them go and tell them they're doing good at it. They're almost there. You almost have it, you know, and you can control a population forever. And and the thing is, the ones that get it, the ones that get it. Here's the earmark of, of it not working. The ones that get it, it's never enough. So, so the, you know, you never see these guys quit. You never see Bill Gates say, you know what? That's it, 38 billion, I'm done. No, everybody wants, now they want 70, 140 billion, 2 trillion, da, da. Like, it's because the shit doesn't fix what it's supposed to. It's not real, you know? Not real, you know? <laughs> it's not real. Yeah, you know? dude. Dude, well, uh, Jim Carrey, who is coming out with uh, a Terrence McKenna uh, do- film or documentary or one of the two, I think it's just a film yep. which is going to be epic. Um, he said, I wish everybody could be rich and famous so they know that's not. And so he's a super conscious filmmaker, individual. Um, and that's that's the truth, man. M- money is basically what is our overarching control. When we can have food, water, clothing, shelter, collaboration. Um, but right now it, it purge to from the non you can do it strategically. Um, you could just fully eject. Um, but it's it's just contributing in places that you want. So I a hundred percent agree, man. And uh um, so, man, I just want to say, like, as a personal level, thank you for who you are, for what you've done, for what you're doing, for integrating the message, man. Integration is key. Way to go. Jeez. Great. Um, and we know, you know, you know, in your guts, you know, if you're being an a-hole or, you know, you're not. So you're integrating it. And I know I, I, I personally have done ayahuasca eight times. Uh, extremely powerful experience. It took what I, I was always kind of on a spiritual path, I'd say. I was always questioning reality and all that kind of stuff, but it was so confirming and it leveled me up very quickly. Um, powerful, powerful stuff. I know people personally, it's changed their life, many people. Um, so the way that you're curating it, it's like taking something raw, like plant medicine. So you take that rawness and then you're adding Western technologies. Now you're amplifying it. So, you know, we have the model. Model T car. But now you're like showing up in like an Audi. You know what I mean? You got sound. You got temperature control. And you're like, okay, hey, you ready to do this? Like you are about to get, you know, spiritually like a reset. And then you start to rewrite your life. You know, it gives you that opportunity because people will get stuck in a pattern, and then they're like, this is the way it is, or they're kind of being pulled in all these different directions. It hones you into yourself um, and gives you a, an opportunity to begin building 
from who you truly are. And, and I know that's what you provide over there. So I am very excited to be out there, uh, meet you in person, experience some more it. medicine, um, do some that. workshops, give some workshops, anything, man, because I, I know I know what a game changer it is. And, and so just want to recognize you for for doing that, man, for, for integrating and building this incredible space. Thank you so much. And listen, thanks for all the work you're doing and for your, the, the people that tune in and, and, and listen to you. And, and I mean, we're all in this together and we're all in it alone. And that's the coolest thing is that, 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 that we're all in it together and we're all in it alone. And all we got to do is get to see us and we're doing our part. Like it's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. And thank you so much, Matthew, for, for having me. And I really am going to hold you to that. I want to see you down here and, uh, and sit with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm in. <laughs> I'm totally in, man. Uh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Thank you, brother. Uh, thank you everybody for watching, but yeah, it's been a real pleasure, man. Have a fantastic rest of your day and uh, I'll be seeing thank you, you in, in real time soon. See, see you guys. You, thank you. Thank you, man.